My mother said that she wanted to be remembered as a sweet old lady when she died. I wanted to say, Mom, to be, to be remembered as sweet, you have to be sweet. <laughs> but I didn't go there. One of my early memories, when I was really little, I don't know, maybe two or three, and my mother said that I had been a good girl all day, and I felt so proud, and the next day I said, I'm going to be a good girl again all day. And tears came to my eyes when I spilled my milk and watched in horror as it crept across the kitchen table, falling onto her clean, well-polished floor. She said, I knew you couldn't be a good girl two days in a row. Here's another classic mom story. We were talking about whether or not it was okay to kiss a boy on the first date. I said that my friend Priscilla, she didn't kiss a boy until the second or even the third date. And she said, well, that's okay for Priscilla because she's so pretty and has a good, such a good personality. But you're just average. So if you want to have a second date, you've got to kiss the boy on the first. Now, you may find this hard to believe, but she really wasn't trying to hurt me or be unkind. She really wasn't. She was just completely and utterly oblivious. I mean completely. She would say something, and my guts would be ripped out and on the floor bloodied, and she would simply walk over them onto her next chore. It was 50 years ago or so after the spilled milk incident when, and thousands of hours of therapy later, when my brother and I were moving her to California to be in an assisted living facility near us. I was feeling the usual angst I felt when I was going to spend time with mom. So I decided if I was going to come out of this unscathed, I needed to do a little work. Well, actually, little's not exactly right, the right word. I pulled out all the stops. The morning that I was going to pick her up for the, from the airport, I went for a run, I did Tai Chi, I meditated, I did yoga. <laughs> I put on a pretty silk scarf thinking I might need this as a touchstone for my own softness. And I chanted all the way to the airport. <laughs> but not before I stopped at my therapist's office to have an imagery session. I wasn't taking any chances. So I get to the airport with plenty of time to spare, and I'm looking up at the monitor when, oh my God, her plane is 20 minutes early. I take off at a run through the airport, dodging people in and out, almost didn't see her being wheeled toward me, and I come to a screeching halt Hi, Mom! You're late. <laughs> no, 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 Mom, I'm not late. Your plane was 20 minutes early. I would have thought you would have been on time for something like this. I needed that scarf. <laughs> After dinner that night, I helped her get ready for bed. And she was never tall. Five feet, two at the most. And I noticed how little and vulnerable she looked in bed underneath my sister-in-law's big down comforter. I didn't say anything. I just gave her a quick good kiss goodnight. And I walked away. And I'm just about to turn out the light when I am overwhelmed with a feeling of tenderness and warmth towards her. I had never felt that before. So I decided the best thing to do would be to ignore it. <laughs> so I just, <laughs> I'm just about to turn out the light again. And I realize I can't ignore it. The feeling is just too big. I go back over to the bed and say really shyly, Mom, I love you. I love you. She looked a little confused, and she said, very matter-of-factly, 
Well, I love you too, and I love your brother too, believe me. <laughs> not exactly connective, not exactly warm, but she had said the words. She had said, I love you. We had said, I love you to each other. And that was no small thing. Three weeks later, my mother died with my brother and I sitting at her side. But not before one of the nurses said, what a sweet old lady she is. <laughs> she got her wish. <laughs> <laughs>